Hi, I'm Gabrielle. I've been on a journey of sharing my spiritual awakening with you all. And in that, I have shared the things that have been uncomfortable and that have been uplifting, and this is one of them. Um, I'm exploring this week the topic of walk-ins. So let's get into it. Definitely out of my comfort zone, but I follow the signs that I get and I totally listen to my gifts and my intuition and my knowing <laughs> and this is what is ready to come out. So I'm sharing it with you guys kind of in real time. Um, and it all started with an email <laughs> from one of you. So I'm gonna uh, first share the email and then we'll get into what happened after that. The email is, Dear Gabrielle, while searching for podcasts with information about getting in touch with your spirit guides a few weeks ago, I found your podcast. I just finished binging all of your past episodes and I'm all caught up now. My spiritual awakening started in late 2017. Initially, I didn't make this exploration a dedicated practice. I have always been very drawn to metaphysical topics. I think I always knew deep down inside that there was something I'm supposed to be doing with my life that revolves around it, but it wasn't until my entire life fell apart that I began to actually give it serious thought. I didn't think I had any abilities or gifts. You know uh, what I mean? So. It was just an interest that I explored on the side. I didn't realize how I was just schlepping my way through life without purpose or meaning until the universe hit me upside the head and was like, hey, you, yeah, you, we've been trying to talk to you. <laughs> I started meditating in 2017 occasionally, but over the past year and a half, I've made it a daily practice. It's absolutely amazing what a difference it has made in my life. I quit my marketing job in 2017 and for the past few years, I've been learning about and making jewelry. I was ready to launch a new business and then COVID happened, setting, back, um, setting that back still to this day. About a year ago, however, something amazing happened. I started to see energy. At first, I had no clue what, was, what I was seeing, and honestly, it scared me. I see energy vortices everywhere. I see chakras. I see mists sometimes. I can see the energy of my spirit guides and guardian angels, but I still am unable to communicate clearly with them. I have my moments, but I'm trying. There's one more thing I wanted to add. In 2017, when my life had unraveled to reach rock bottom, I too tried to take my life. When you shared that so very personal and painful experience, I just sobbed because I obviously know how you felt. And I understood the, the dynamic with your brother very well. It wasn't my first attempt, but it was almost it was my most successful. I woke up in the hospital four days later. I know my daughter sent the paramedics to my house, but I have no clue how they got inside. The house was locked up and no one had the key but me. After I got home, there was no sign that anyone broke in, which would have been necessary. When I came, became cognizant, as I mentioned, four days later, there were people in and out of my room, doctors, social workers, nurses, etc., and all were talking to me like we had been talking for a few days, which apparently we were, I just had no recollection of it. There was nothing at all, no lack, uh, wait, nothing, there was nothing at all, no vague memories of anything whatsoever. It was like I suddenly just snapped out of it for lack of a better description and found myself in a hospital bed. I was too ashamed to ask my daughter about any of the details. I looked up my hospital chart online afterward and it was also strangely vague. Fast forward to about six months ago, I was listening to Dolores Cannon's lectures and she was talking about walk-ins. That made me stop in my tracks. Do you know anything about walk-ins? I think I may be one and I'd love to hear what you think or know about this subject. It's been running in um, background for me ever since. And what does that mean? 
sending you um, love, Gabrielle, Patty. So <laughs> when I read this email, I felt something strange inside of me and it like the best way to describe it is I felt called out. And why would I have felt called out? I have no idea. <laughs> but as you guys know, my gifts are knowing and feeling and it felt like someone was calling me out directly. And I remember, I don't, I didn't know what walk-ins were at that time. I had only heard um, one time it used as a, a reference to describe someone, but I didn't know at all what it was. So, so why would I have felt like I was being called out? I have no idea. But because I do follow my guides and my, my gifts, I knew that it meant something. And I mentioned this last week because I had just received that email, I think a few days before that. And it was like started this rabbit hole of why, why is this making me feel something? It wasn't just a topic of something to research. It felt deeply personal. And like I said, almost like she was shining a light on me and, and what I really felt was that she was calling me out as one and even so so much so that i went back and reread the email to think to see like wait is she asking me if i'm a walk-in and sure enough as i read she doesn't mention me at all but that is how i i um how i felt it I, um so what did I do? The first thing I could do, because I read, I got the email at night, is I went on to Gaia and I found a show on there. There's one that is called um, Two Souls in One Lifetime, and it is an interview with Nicholas David Nan. And honestly, it left me not really understanding them still, and I felt like it was in a way incomplete. Um, so then the next day I got up, I went to the cliffs and I meditated on it. And I was meditating more for Patty than, you know, for me to understand it. It was more of what am I supposed to talk about this? I don't know anything about it. And um, if not, what can I sh share with her to help her feel, I guess, m more accepting in her own life? And the message that I got was, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if she's a walk-in. It What matters is that she accepts every part of herself. And of course, that didn't surprise me because I know when we call out any of our, our quirks, <laughs> I'll say, where we want to know more, the answers I always give back are it, it literally just go with it, go with the flow, go with who you are, because you wouldn't be feeling it if it wasn't so. But the mind is what wants to know about it, right? And that's not important in terms of why we're here. I know that it's something that our mind wants to wrap around and make sense of. And I think sometimes too, it can help kind of like shed light on things and make you feel more embodied because you now have an explanation for why this is this way or what have you. But so I went, I came home that day and I was looking, I think on Instagram and I found someone that does, has a podcast named the Reality Revolution podcast. Um, it's by someone named Brian Scott. And he had an episode that he did fairly recently in September that's all about walk-ins. And a lot of it he's quoting from a book called The Strangers Among Us by Ruth Montgomery. But his, it's I think an hour long, and his explanation of it really resonated with me to the point of like putting down my defenses about it and being like, okay, I can now understand what this is. So I'm going to try to paraphrase. I'm going to link below the podcasts that I'm referencing because I think they're beautiful and it helped me understand more. So number one, why I had such a strong reaction to her email, but also understanding that walk-ins are uh, <laughs> something that should be accepted and not be looked at in a, a weird way. So a walk-in is essentially when you have a, a person on this planet, um, you know, 
it, they're going through their life. Everything is fine, normal. They're living their life. Sometimes they can have a traumatic situation. It can be a near-death experience. It can be a suicide attempt. It can be just an energetic difficulty where the original soul is ready to leave. Now, the person can choose to commit suicide or if this is something that was already planned out before the incarnation, let's say on the other side, two souls got together and decided you're going to carry out this part of the lifetime so that you can get your karma dealt with from these lessons and then I will come in at this point and finish the lifetime in this person. Now essentially the walk-ins are higher evolved souls and they feel like they don't need to incarnate into a newly born baby and then go through the like childhood, adolescence, preteens and all of that because they have already lived so many lives that they don't have those lessons that they still need to learn. But the idea of incarnating into a body that is an adult and ready to bring forth the seed that they're here to, I guess, implant <laughs> into our consciousness is way more attractive to them. And when, let's see, when I learned that, you know, it's not a negative thing. Essentially, it's just that one soul gets to this point where they've lived all that they feel that they need to out of this incarnation and they're ready to move on to the next incarnation. You know, they're ready to like, um, I don't want to say like accept defeat because I don't believe that's what it is. I think it's just that they are ready to move on to the next thing that evolves their soul. But the body and the person and this life is meant to move on and do a mission contract that they agreed to prior to incarnating into this body. So sometimes, and, and this happens when the mission of the person is, is a great one, is one that possibly does take two souls, like, you know, almost like a, a relay race, making it come to fruition. And when it was gonna described in that way, it made more sense to me. It's not a negative thing. It's not. Um, it's like saving the the vehicle, so that the vehicle can keep going on and complete the mission of its life or its contract that it came into complete. But it's almost like it's at a pit stop, and it gets like. Uh, you know, the tires change, the, you know, uh, the fuel topped up, and then it's put back out and, and like put on its way. So Patty has really had an extreme situation where she has um, explained that in this, in 2017, she actually did try to leave this plane and was out of her consciousness for four days. Um, and she couldn't ha explain that. And it wasn't until later that when this word came up for her, it was a trigger of that's what I am. I identify with that. And so up to this point, I was like, okay, I can understand why she thinks this, you know, and I, um, I, I did actually reach out and ask her, does she believe that it happened in 2017 or was she, did she believe that it happened earlier in her life? And um, she has since gotten back to me and she's, she's not sure. She's um, kind of still looking or like feeling into that. And the reason that I asked is when I watched the show on Gaia, the um, Nicholas, he talks a lot about that this happens with younger, younger um, people. Um, it, because for him, it happened when he was a child. Now, since watching that first show, again, I knew nothing about walk-ins. Um, I now know it doesn't, the age doesn't matter. It's not about the age. And it's not about, people talk a lot about it being a near-death experience in order for it to happen. I don't believe that either. I believe that it happens when it, it's meant to happen, when it's right for both souls for, to, for the transition to happen. And it feels good on both soul's parts like because a soul would not leave a, a incarnation unless it felt safe to and it felt like it had carried out its mission in this life so in the in the near-death experience 
it's jolted and so it can be like reminded, okay, you're done here and it's time to move on. Or you could say, look, I'm tired. I don't wanna do this anymore. Is someone else wanting to come in and finish this incarnation? But I think there are also ones that are planned before the incarnation happens and that the transition can happen in a much smoother way and it doesn't have to be traumatic to both souls or either soul or the person. So, yeah, okay, so then I went the next day and I meditated again on it because I just, I couldn't get it, this idea out of my mind. And again, as I have said before, whenever we have these these messages or these like, I feel like they're hits, there's a reason. You can choose to ignore it, but there's a reason that that, that my soul was like pinging on it. It felt like a ping, like a, this is, this is someone bringing you a message and you can choose to go into it or you can keep surf, keep it surface and just try to help Patty and direct her to whatever she needs for her healing. So back in the next day, my meditation, this time, again, I had still the intention of Patty, but I also now at that point, felt there's a personal reason for me that I'm exploring this. So um, what I got was, if you want to know, timing is everything. You have um, a chance to know. And I was like, what? And then I realized back in December, I had made a an appointment with Kat Fowler, who she does her own podcast called the Awakening, the Soul Awakening podcast. And she's an Akashic Records reader. And I had never heard of her, but uh, she did an episode in December and it popped up in my feed and I listened to it and there was something back. It was, I went back and looked because it ends up being like super important. But on December 23rd was when I heard it. And there was something in me at that point that knew I would need to have a conversation with her. When I went to schedule the appointment, I didn't have a need to have my Akashic records read, but I just knew that there was a reason to talk to her. So when I went to schedule it, the first available appointment wasn't until uh, February 10th. Um, So I scheduled it and forgot about it. So in my meditation, what it was, Everything happens in the timing that it's supposed to. And this is why you're ready to know if you want to know. And then uh, I remember kind of going back and why did I even book the appointment? A lot of what she talked about in that episode, which I'll link below, is that she talks a lot about um, the place of origin for souls. And I think I what I resonated with is I wanted to know where my soul was originating from. And that I... I feel very earth-based and I feel like I've lived many incarnations in, on earth, so I feel very safe and secure here, but I had this feeling that I was getting help from other planets. And I think that's why I booked it. I can't say for sure, but I think that's why. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I was like, okay. So that, that day was the message that I got. And yeah, if you wanna know, you can ask. So I had the appointment yesterday and um, (laughs) I asked the question (laughs) Um, and it's funny how energy works. Everything happens in exactly the time that it's supposed to. So I'm not coming on and having this conversation with you guys as a way of like validating my my pings or my feelings about this question from Patty. But I asked the question and the answer that she got back was that normally they don't confirm this for people because it's not important. It's not important in the sense that we're here to embrace the soul that is in us, right? Like we're here to live that energy. And and it feels like, uh, the fuel behind a vehicle. And, and that's the best way I, I can describe it. I was trying to explain this to Richard yesterday and that's the, the analogy that I came up with. Um, so they said that yes, I they would confirm for me that I was a walk-in 
and um, the only reason they were confirming it was because I already knew. They said that, yes, my reason that I felt like she was calling me out as she was, or, or their, my, <laughs> my walk-in soul was being called out. Um, I think everything happens in the timing that it's supposed to. Of course, me personally, it's not something that I had ever, uh, number one, I told you even known about. So it's not like I've, I've looked into this or hoped that I was one or, but when I got that answer, my next question was when I want to know when, because I had, you know, the last almost two years of my life have been pretty extreme. I know I, my whole being has changed. Um, I am a different person than I was two years ago, and I, my, I attribute it to living my life freely and sharing my soul with, with you guys and with everybody in my life, and therefore I'm not hiding from who I am anymore. So I thought, is it that when I did the um, 5-MeO-DMT or the Rumi psychedelic, because that was like such an opening for me, that I thought, is that the time that the switch happened or the transition happened? And they said, no, it wasn't. <laughs> so my original soul did go through that experience and that has been with me uh, for most of my awakening experience. The transition happened on 12-12 um, of 2020, so not that long ago, and I was shocked. <laughs> um, I felt like... what. Why would my original soul have have gotten me this far only to to be done with me then? You know, it, that didn't make sense to me. And I'm sorry if I get emotional, but um, she, they did say there is a lot of um, like remnants of that soul still inside of me because it's, uh, you know, fairly recent. But that that soul was tired. It had had many incarnations back to back and she said it looks like it's been in like a washing machine cycle over and over and over again. And it felt like the work that you're here to do, it was, t it was too tired. And, um, sorry, you know, I am so thankful that that part of me was able to come alive, even if it was tired, because I'm, I feel, oh my gosh, I'm not, I'm not mean to cry, <laughs> but I feel regretful that I didn't bring it forward sooner or bring my real self um, forward sooner. But again, I know everything happens in the timing that it's supposed to. Um, and I just am so thankful that, that that soul got me as far as it did, right? Like, December 12th is not that long ago. So anyways, <laughs> she said there's still some remnants of the soul, the essence of that soul still inside of me, and there are things that I need to do to reconcile with it. Um, excuse me. <laughs> so then I got really curious about, okay, wait, what was going on in my life at that day, you know? And so I went back and looked at my calendar and... I had planned to do um, a 1212 portal circle locally. And um, like a couple days prior to that, I told her I didn't, I wasn't going to come because here in San Diego, the COVID restrictions had come into effect. And I just did not feel safe going into a group of people I don't know. And I don't know where they've been and all of that. So I did cancel that appointment. And funnily enough, like two weeks later, she announced on her Instagram that she was recovering from COVID. So I don't know if she actually was carrying it at that circle, but I knew I wasn't supposed to go to that circle. So I was home. I don't remember it being anything eventful. I, um, yeah, I don't have, I can't say like there was anything traumatic that happened that day. But then I look back at the episodes that I put put out immediately after that. And the episode was this one that I called Transparency. And it was about releasing the past shames of my past, which, as you guys know, was the suicide attempt and the thing that happened when I was a child. And I remember at that point feeling like the need to purge 
these past hurts inside of me. And now I can see why when a, when a, a walk-in soul comes into a vehicle, I, th I believe the um, podcast that I'm going to link below talks about this. There, there is still a need to almost like renovate the body and renovate what's there and use what they can and discard what they don't need. And I feel like that episode of me needing to share that was, okay, this is stuff that we've been carrying in this body for way too long. Let's put it out there and let it go. And then after that episode was when I got the message to slow down. And then I didn't release um, any episodes for two weeks. And that was all about going inward and just being with myself. And then January 8th was the, the next episode. And from that point on, my life <laughs> has changed. Um, that week, I had been talking about doing ayahuasca that week. The opportunity came into my, again, my vision or my, I don't know, perception. <laughs> and so I ended up booking a trip to Costa Rica at the end of March to do that, which in this Akashic Records reading I had this week, um, she talked, I asked her about it and she said, yeah, I'm supposed to do heart healing work with that plant medicine. So I know that happened at exactly the time that it was supposed to. And then if you remember coming to, onto YouTube, that was something that was brought to my attention. And I normally, normal me, <laughs> the original part of me would have had to really wrap my head around it and really um, planned and gotten everything perfect and needed to get the equipment and all of that stuff. And this new me was like, no, we're doing it next week. And that is... I remember talking about this and saying like, these are the leaps of faith that we can take, even though they're fearful and, or we feel fear around them. Now I look back and I think, no wonder I had this energy and just not caring to just do it because it's, it's a new energy, a new soul. So <clears throat> I don't know a lot about this new soul. It is from, um, Sirius, that's where the soul of origin is from. I don't know anything about Sirius. Um, it's like this um, reading I had yesterday opened me up to so many things that I don't know about. Um, but I, I'm not like jumping into like discover everything because I don't want to get overwhelmed. But I'm also <clears throat> feeling open to whatever the stories are meant to show me and almost like help me know myself more. This this new soul is much more brave <laughs> than I think where I was coming from. Um, I would, had a conversation with Richard about this last night and he was like, we've been together 10 years and you're not, you're still the same person. And I said, what I'm feeling is the same person. I'm not the, a different person. I feel like it's almost like the soul is the gasoline for a vehicle. And what happened is I went from regular unleaded fuel to the premium fuel. And I think like if we get down to that metaphor, does it matter where that fuel was pulled out, pulled from the ground? I mean, cause essentially that's the soul, right? <laughs> does it matter who's behind that? Like where it actually came from? No, it matters that the vehicle is now able to move forward in a much stronger and secure place and I don't think that changes the vehicle. I don't feel different. I just feel like the energy behind the the person is is like turbocharged in some way and and I have to say like even though it's kind of feels a little traumatic to go through this all in one week, I also know that it happened for a reason, you know, and I am open to all of it. I don't know what it means, but I, I remember back even in that first kind of meditation was it doesn't matter. Just the thing that matters is accepting who you are and accepting that that what happened is what is meant to happen and what is meant for you. And I, I, you know, I don't know. 